Hey, this is John. Let's Talk Native is now on Patreon. You can support the show by going to patreon.com slash let's talk native. We will be producing exclusive content for our Patreon supporters. Thanks for checking us out. Let's Talk Native is produced at the LTN Studios on the Cattaraugus territory of the Seneca Nation. We break all the rules for Native media by peeling back the layers of assimilation and indoctrination. No prayers, no buffalo speeches, and no spirituality shows. While this podcast does not provide a path to spiritual enlightenment, we do take a tough look at history, oppression, and our survival. But the real goal here is to bring our people together by breaking down what separates us. So, welcome to Let's Talk Native with John Kane. Sego, and thanks for joining me. The company you keep. Now, look, I'm not going to tell you that you should leave it up to me to pick your friends. I'm not going there, but... You know, it it, it it comes to me that we do, at some level, get defined by the people we are associated with. And as I've done interviews and talked to other people in, in various places, um, you know, and even as we we understand our place in the world as it relates to the, the Native people that we are associated with, uh, you know, I hate to use it, but the, the word tribe. I, I, I got thinking about when the Choctaw Nation um, uh, passed a tribal resolution uh, that they were declaring themselves a Christian nation. And so where does that leave you if you're not a Christian? You know, so I, I got thinking about this whole idea of, of who you are associated with and how you associate with people. And, you know, as we're, we look at projects or the, the 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 role we play in activism and that kind of stuff we we often are trying to find like-minded people what's what's difficult is when you look within your own community and you realize you don't have a whole lot of like-minded people in your own community you start wondering am i the odd man out right but and, and my my co-host in uh in new york uh, regan Who's going to join us, by the way, on, on the next program? She's going to join us on, on Monday. Um, or I'm, I'm sorry, on Tuesday. <laughs> um, you know, she, she said that she wouldn't be the activist that she is if she weren't in New York City. Because it was in New York that she became more familiar with like-minded people. Because back home, it's kind of a narrow view on things. So I, what I want to talk about is, is how you develop the kinds of relationships that are going to allow you to advance not only your personal agenda, but to accomplish the goals that you may have as an activist, perhaps even as an entrepreneur, um, those kinds of things. So again, titling the show, the, the company you keep, because we do get associated with that. And look, when I'm talking about the company you keep, I'm talking about finding searching out like-minded people and they don't necessarily have to be in your community because I think the more relationships relationships we have whether it's from territory to territory or like I said I think about my relationship with, with somebody like Regan you know she she is a um, an urban living uh, native person who I align with on a lot of uh, you know, the the philosophies and the views that we have when it comes to uh, um, to our, our not just our roles in activism, but but your basic philosophy. So you're you're not always going to find the uh, the, the people that you are most closely aligned with in your own native territory. Now that can be a temporary circumstance. So if you want to start a movement. If you want to build something, if you want to change, uh, be a change agent, sometimes you've got, you've got to you know, be, the, be the change that you want to see and then build coalitions, um, build projects, do the kinds of things that are going to um, influence people to see you as the like-minded people for them. So 
I, and I, so I want to talk talk to this because the problem ends up being there are people who get labeled as leaders, you know, iconic figures. I use that expression all the time. These iconic individuals, and that's the ones that everybody knows, right? And oftentimes they get elevated not by the native people in a, in a given community. They get uh, they get may get elevated by academia, you know, or you know. Uh, you know, publishers or, 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 you know, people who want to put them on television and that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, so other people end up propping up who are the native voices that are worth listening to because some listening to, they make the decision who that is. So we don't hear all the other voices. Look, I, w I was glad to see that, um, that New York times on their online, uh, on their website, uh, New York times.com had, actually made a decision that they were going to promote native uh, uh podcasts and you know michael kicking bear uh, who was pequot mentioned us and and look we've seen an uptick in uh, in some of the people who checked out our, our podcast and, and view some of our videos and that kind of stuff so we, we've seen that but that's why i'm saying we need to find those voices that we that we align with and and then be careful on what we're willing to overlook you know, we, we've talked about, uh, you know, I did a whole show on, or actually mentioned on two shows, this idea of cancel culture. Look, you may align with somebody on a lot of issues, but if you've got to make a decision when you find there's a glaring problem with somebody that you're aligned with. You've got to decide whether you're going to take a position that I need to hold the people that I'm associated with accountable to a standard and expect them to hold me accountable too. Because if we don't do that, then it only takes, you know, it, somebody else's actions can, it, we can be reflected in, in somebody else's actions. And, and I think that's one of the things that, that can kill a movement. You know, one of the things I remember a few years back when um, in Canada, they have these things called these McDonald Laurier reports. And they're all these, these policy reports and that kind of stuff. And somebody had, uh, one of these these reports came out and it was authored by uh, um, a, a writer by the name of Douglas Bland. And he did this whole analysis about the um, likelihood uh, of, an, of an insurgency in Canada based on um, native people, you know, uh, uh, pushing back on Canadian rule and that kind of stuff, rule, Canadian rule of law, all that thing. So what he had done was he, he, he used a model that was created by one of the Ivy League schools in the U.S., and the, he plugged all of Canada's information, all uh, the information associated with, with you know, the indigenous population, and came up with a determination based on this computer modeling that said, yes, Canada was, was ripe for an insurgency, a, a violent insurgency um, springing up from, from an, uh, an indigenous discontent and that kind of thing. And one of the things that, it, depending on how you read the report, I mean, you could read it as very insulting, but there's, there's a part of me that, that wasn't so insulted. But what he was criticizing and what he was saying, the reason that um, the, the native efforts, uh, whether it was, I don't know more, or, you know, or, or even some of the environmental, um, uh, resistance that we put up. And this is long, long before land back, you know, 1492 land back lane and that kind of thing. But what he said is that there's a lack of leadership. Now, one of the things that, that concerns me about leadership is that not only can, if you, if you elevate one person, it becomes the target for, um, you know, for those who are afraid of your insurgency, so to speak. But it also makes you a victim of the indiscretions of that, of that leadership. I think having movements that, that are leaderless, and that was so, what, I, what attracted me towards the Idle No More movement, because it was, it was literally gra grassroots. And as we've seen some of the, uh, the more successful the social justice movements as of late, we see that it's, that it's a lot of times it's, it's less based on one or two specific um, iconic individuals or, or charismatic leaders and more on the idea that, that a bunch of people are willing to show up. So I think the idea of how we, how we approach leadership and who we are willing to follow as well as what we are willing to follow. You know, I, I know native people, really had to do a little bit of uh, uh, 
of an assessment on how much they were going to jump in with the, with the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, and do they need to just say, no, Native Lives Matter and, and you know, get into, into that, that whole you know, uh, conversation. And, and I think enough Native people were of the same mind that I was with saying, no, we don't need to water down or appropriate Black Lives Matter uh, and, and then turn it into something else. If we're advocating their movement, we become beneficiaries of that anyway. And, and, and as it turns out, we were. I mean, at, at the same time that Confederate monuments and statues were being toppled, so were Columbus statues. So were, uh, you know, the, you know, Huna Paracera, Conquistadors, different, different people who we view as, you know, as anything but heroes from the Native community. Some of these, these figures and these statues and these images became the target's right alongside the Confederate monuments and some of the, you know, those figures that, that, you know, that, that black people loathe. So, and, and this was, so it kind of proved out as far as I was concerned, um, the benefits of supporting that movement as it is understanding that, that we're going to see, I mean, look, the Washington football team changed its, changed its name. Now, how does that con how is that connected to Black Lives Matter? Well, it, it, because it's a bigger social justice movement, and by uh, by the, the amount of native support that went towards Black Lives Matter, and we'll, look, we're not a big population. Our movements by themselves be become <laughs> pale by comparison. So, but when the when a native voice is lent into the Black Lives Matter movement, all of a sudden that so social justice. Um, lens widens, it, it broadens, and all of a sudden they're saying, well, you know, we need to be concerned about this uh, this Washington football team using a racial slur. Because the immediate thing that, when people think about a racial slur, the, the immediate thing that comes to mind is uh, is some racial slur geared towards black people. Why? Because, the, because they have been such an oppressed people uh, and have been the victims of so much um, identifiable racist policies um, and, and, and oppression. I'm not saying Native people haven't. We certainly have. But, it, but it's kind of been pushed off to the side a little bit. And we, our population, I mean, look, this wasn't just about oppressing Native people. This is about taking our land. For, for, for Black people, it was simply about oppressing Black people. It wasn't about necessarily taking anything other than their freedom. So there, was, there, was, there were two different things at play here. So what I... I when I, when I talk about this idea of trying to be mindful about the company you keep is you create a, a different association and, and uh, with movements, with individuals, because again, we, we talked about this cancel culture. Otherwise you, you've got to be real quick to respond. And uh, if you've if you've propped somebody up and, they, and then you find out that there's tremendous flaws in their character because they've they, they've got some skeletons in their closet, you've got to do damage control. And if you don't prop them up in the first place, if you if you can appreciate some alignment with with diff, different individuals without necessarily coming across as being you know sycophantic followers of somebody, this is again that that company you keep. You you we have to be more cognizant of it. So. I think we have to be aware of who we, not only who we look up to, but who we're willing to tell others that we look up to. Who do you follow? What do you follow? You know, who are your mentors, for, uh, so to speak? And, and I think this is something that we have to be um, uh, careful with. And, but I also think that when, when we're, we're, we're looking at the direction that we want to go as individuals. And so whether it's based on, you know, learning history or learning language or, or learning culture all, or all three together, we don't want to get caught into some of the hysteria. Look, I, I get phone calls all the time you know, from people who say, oh, you know, like I heard your show and uh, I think that we can work together. And then as soon as I start hearing some, just a little bit of crazy coming into the conversation about, you know, some, some conspiracy theory that's a little farther out than I'll, I start to pull back immediately. So, um, and that's kind of why I wanted to bring up this subject today. I think we have to be cautious, but I also think that we, we do need to be, uh, we need to work at this idea of coalition building. 
So on one hand, I don't think we should we should all you know be be fighting every battle all by ourselves. I think I think we do need to have relationships, but I think those relationships are, are something that we have to be a little bit more diligent about as we're as we are um, expressing our commitment to those relationships. And so I, I because we like I said we will be judged by sometimes by the actions of others and. And I've seen how bad some of these things go. Getting back to the Douglas Bland McDonald Laurier report, you know, when when he was su suggesting that there was a lack of leadership, which in in his assessment meant there was less cohesion. I looked at it and saying, no, that lack of leadership is 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 a good thing <laughs> because there's there's fewer people to be targeted. And an example of this, as he was advocating or not even advocating, as he was suggesting um, that the I Don't Know More movement had this momentum and, and then began to describe why what was killing the momentum, what he didn't recognize was there was a certain leadership that got, uh, you know, that was being propped up. And I think about Teresa Spence, who was that band council chief from Mattawapiskat, who was doing a hunger strike at the same time that I Don't Know More movement was moving. All of a sudden, you know, there's all this, you know, we love Teresa and, you know, go Teresa and, you know, and, and all this other stuff. So she got propped up as, as a leader even though her agenda was completely different than than the Idle No More movement, and in fact, you know, her agenda was again when you do a hunger strike, you're calling attention to yourself, and and she did that. Turns out that you know she was also bogged down by you know by graft, I guess you will. I mean, she, she and her her life partner were uh, were making hundreds of thousands of dollars while most of the people of Attawapiskat uh, were living in abject poverty. And, you know, frankly, the, the, the teepee with all its, uh, you know, uh, accessories was probably a better um, uh, home than, than some of the corrugated metal and uh, uh, tar paper shacks that uh, that people in Attawapiskat were, were living in. In fact, I thought if you want to make a demonstration in uh, outside of, you know, in, in Ottawa on Victoria Island, don't build some luxurious teepee. Build one of those, uh, you know, one of those ramshackle shacks that people in Attawapiskat are living in. But but again, when her with her failure of her hunger strike to accomplish, you know, the goals that she listed as her objectives, it it took a lot of wind out of the sail. So Again, I think we have to be careful when we prop up individuals, and 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 I'm, you know, I may be too willing sometimes to uh, uh, to take my shots at some of the more iconic leaders, and and I and I don't want it to be interpreted that I that I'm jealous of uh, of somebody else's success, but I listen to the words. So when I hear, you know, one of these recognizable you know, um, made for television, uh, native faces and voices. I want to listen to more of what they say, because before I'm going to go necessarily align myself with them or, or be a part of propping them up. I want to make sure that I'm not going to be disappointed. And, and, and so this is, this is kind of what I'm, what I'm talking about here. I want to make sure that, that the people that we're choosing to be our teachers are teaching stuff that's true and and that are leading us in the right direction. I you know I don't want somebody trying to suggest that I got to drink Kool Aid later on. You know, or, or it wasn't even what was it called Flavor Aid? I think it wasn't actually Kool Aid. I got to think of the other other. Uh, everybody calls the drinking Kool Aid because of the J the Jonestown thing, but it wasn't actually Kool Aid. It was a different. Uh, I think it was Flavor Aid. <laughs> anyway, I digress. <laughs> so, no, I I think we we need to make sure that we uh, that the people we are associated with that we can challenge them and that they challenge us not to, not to, to, you know, to cut our legs out, but they challenge us for growth. So these are the things that I, that I'm talking about here. When I say we need to, we, we need to build coalitions, but I think we have to be guarded and, and cautious about the company that we keep. So that's, that's my message for today's show. And, and that's something that I've, I've never really talked about before. I, look, I have people that I've known for, you know, you know, for most of my life, and I know the people that I trust in terms of their judgment. Um, it doesn't mean that I agree with everything that they say, but but I I know where 
their their not just where their heart but where their intentions are and i know that they they could be solid um sources of, of information especially to do with the culture and with the language and, and that kind of thing i mean i can i can read as well as anybody else as far as you know what other new information i'm going to bring into into my conversation and what other analogies or examples or concerns that i that i develop that i develop because today i have more things that i can look at that concern me than perhaps i i looked at you know 10 years ago you know when you're when you're younger i mean you know go back 20 or 30 years ago when you're younger and you think you're a hammer then, then everything's a nail right so you're looking for the next battle to fight not the, not necessarily the next problem to solve so as you get older now you realize that that everything is in a battle. Sometimes these things are just are, are problems that can be solved. Some are some problems are, you know, you you, know, you have to push off to the side because you, we we have to recognize whether we as people, as a people or our coalition, our you know the, the the company that we keep, are we in a position to solve that problem? You know, and, and, you know, it's easy to, to put dollars and cents to something, for instance. If, you're, if you have an ambitious project and you don't have the funding for it, well, the pro one of the problems that happens there is, you know, what are you going to do to get the funding? And, and what are you willing to give up for it? And, and, you know, so how much of your soul do you sell because you're trying to advance something? This is always a challenge. And we've seen this. I mean, look, we've seen this in the, in the tobacco business. We've seen this in the gaming industry. When I, when I think about what native territories have given up because they think the bottom line is all that matters, I'm looking at the situation the Seneca Nation's in with, you know, with its uh, revenue sharing that they can't, I don't think they know how to get out of it. And, and in fact, they've, they've essentially res resigned themselves to this, well, it's just the cost of doing business. No, that's not, revenue sharing isn't the cost of doing business fees and taxes and 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 you know these kinds of things that you have to pay are the cost of doing business but if you all of a sudden turn revenue sharing into the cost of doing business then you've made you've made a bargain that uh, that is probably not worth keeping so you've got to i guess what, I, what i'm saying is even as we try to advance something so whether it's commercial success uh or um, you know, even doing what we're doing here, you know, the idea of doing media and communications do I look at what what's happened in the mainstream. Could I make sure that I, you know, have kittens walking across by <laughs> in front of the camera so I can get more views? I mean, is that really what I want to do? I know there are some people listening out there who are saying, yes, kittens would work. No, I'm not going to do it. So what's your compromise? I mean, and are the number of views or even the number of, the number of sponsors worth um, selling out a little bit? This is, these are the challenges. So again, I come back to that same, you know, the title of the show, the company you keep. So do we want to, as we're trying to advance something, I mean, I, I think there's this idea of trying to stay, to stay true to yourself, but that doesn't mean you don't change. You know, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that as we, as we go down the road, we don't learn something and we say, you know what, I think the path that I was trying to, or what I was trying to accomplish, there might be a better way to do it. And I think the idea of, of whether it's technology, you know, whether it's, you know, whether we think the um the base that we're trying to reach is changed you know whether because of age or because of uh you know you know uh calamity out there whether it's climate change or politics or 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 a, or a global pandemic there may be things that happen out there that say that make us have to think about doing things a little different and you know when we when we talk about a successful movement you know that movement can involve things like um, commercial enterprises. You know, it can in involve, you know, fundraising. But a lot of what we're talking about here is is really trying to educate and making sure that when we're, we are teaching a subject, when we are confronting an issue, that that we are accurate and that we, we, we don't call get called out for advancing some, you know, some half-baked conspiracy theory. Look, I understand some of the things that ha that have happened to Native people are are 
already sensational enough. We don't need to embellish them. We don't need to make it more than it than it really is. And and I and I've listened to to people come up with this. You know, all oh, these are the scientific experiments they're doing on all of us, and they're doing this and they're doing that. I'm thinking, even if that's true. <laughs> I don't think we know enough to make that uh, make that claim. We can talk about the things that are happening to us every single day. Uh, assimilation programs. I mean, some people think, well, oh, they're just trying to kill us all. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that's what they're... I think, you know, there, there may be some benefit to you know, to the outside or to those who, who are ne not necessarily our friends to us not being, you know, wiped off the face of the earth. I've listened to, you know, a lot of conspiracy theories out that talk about eliminating, you know, in the, in the way that it was first proposed, you know, L Frank bomb style, the idea of exterminating all native people. I don't think that's necessarily the plan anymore. I think that th there is probably some some other benefits that you know that our adversaries and that our oppressors um, uh, have that would uh, th that would likely keep us around so we can be used and manipulated by them. That's got to be more of a concern to me. Are we being manipulated? Are we being used by uh, by other people and or by people from within? So this is part of the the, the concerns that I have. I want to make sure that. If we create an organization or if we join, join an organization, that they are legit. You know, uh, yeah, I, I did this whole thing with the, uh, on my WBAI show talking about um, th this battle between some people who claim to be native people who are clearly frauds. And then on the other hand, you've got native people who, uh, because they aren't federally recognized, you know, they, they get... Um, you know, dismissed or, or rejected as, as Native people by other Native people. So we get into this whole battle about who are we going to align ourselves with? And do we take the risk on, on aligning ourselves with people who have, who have questionable backgrounds? I think background is an issue. And, and the idea of knowing somebody's family and that kind of stuff, that's not just a way of, of doing a, a background search. Part of that is, you know, is, is custom and, and tradition to when you meet somebody is to know who their family is. And I and and that, there's a reason for that. Part of it is courtesy. Part of it is to is to you know begin to identify people that you may have in common in your lives or or or, or an earlier part of your life. Um, but but this is the way that you, that you that you learn about people. So I think this is part of what we have to do as we you know as we reach especially critical times in 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 trying to advance changes in our lives all right hey we, we reached the bottom of the hour so we'll take a break and uh but i, I want to talk a little bit more about that. i got I've, I've got a few more topics on my list on this idea of the company you keep so we'll we'll hit on a few more when we come back this is john kane this is let's talk native All right, thanks for coming back. This is John Kane. This is Let's Talk Native. Hey, I want to give a shout out to some of my sponsors. I want to thank uh, Ross and Ali John and the RJE family of businesses. I want to uh, thank Eric White and ERW Enterprises and the folks at Grand River Enterprises. Uh, before I get back into it, a couple of things. I, I did just get word uh, yesterday that uh, I made it onto the agenda of the Cambridge Central School Board uh, school board meeting uh, next uh, next week. So um, I am pushing that that mascot issue a little bit farther. I've, I I got uh, targeted by a few people, some some haters out there who wrote some <laughs> some some long diatribes about me attacking the community and that kind of stuff. So it's, so it's kind of interesting, but um, I feel pretty confident on where that battle is going. And this is, you know, again, you, you make a commitment to, to do some things and 
for me to have stood uh, stood up in Lancaster or in uh, Neshaminy or Glastonbury or, or any place else where this battle over the mascots has stepped up, for me to have in the background the school that I went to still calling themselves, you know, the Indians and having, you know, a, another stereotypical um, um, a logo and mascot. Um, I always felt like that was baggage that I had to clean up. And and I would have felt like I was being hypocritical if I'm going to other people's schools, uh, even if it is on invitation, um, and never uh, addressing it or confronting it in the in the school that I went to, you know, went to as a you know as a youngster. So um, I just wanted to throw that out there, and, and you know, we'll keep you, you know, we'll bring it up from time to time on where where some of these issues go. All right. Um, so I'm, in talking about the company that you keep. You know, one of the things that that I've talked a lot about is voting, right? And and how inappropriate it is, you know, for us to vote in the, in the non-native elections, or, or that's my view, and and why I don't do it. But I also do suggest to people that there are other ways that you can vote for all intents and purposes, and and it's the idea of voting with your dollars. So when I talk about the company that you keep, you also have to consider where do you shop. What are you supporting with your dollars? Not only what is the, you know, the multinational corporation, you know, so that that is benefiting from your um, from your purchases and your your consumption. But if you're going to find relationships um, that you're you're trying to uh, nurture with this coalition building, you know, trying to find, you know, what products and services can be purchased at more of a local level and w with people that you that are like minded as i said as i said there these are these are important decisions that we make i know it's easy just to find the the cheapest source for for buying something and trust me we all do that we all do sh you know shop um you know for for price you know when when price is the is the biggest driver but there are also other things that you can build with it, with with your purchasing power so I, I think the idea of being smart with with how uh, what we're advancing with our own you know purchases with our own consumption is uh, is a factor and it should be considered in with this whole list of um, of the company that you keep so to speak now the other thing is that just talking about voting is you know this this illusion that you have to vote for the lesser of two evils um, all the time, and 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 that's what we saw, you know, playing out in the American elections. We see it play out in the Canadian elections, but we also see it playing out in in native elections, in tribal elections, and uh, and and I don't, I think there is something to be said for boycotting an election if if you are in that system uh in, in if, if your territory is is governed by an elective system i think there is something to be said for for boycotting and as as i've said multiple times making those governments less relative and relevant in your in your lives but when you do select or or, or vote for somebody or, or or follow somebody I think it's really important that we that we make sure that we've chosen wisely and and that we don't settle. You know, look, when people talk about leadership, we get into this debate and I've talked about it all the time here. There's a difference between being a leader and being a servant of your people. You know, in the our in the, the Haudenosaunee culture, um, we didn't necessarily prop up leaders. We, we would recognize leadership skills. But we wouldn't like just elevate somebody into a, into a leadership position. What we would do is we say, we we understand that there's certain qualities that you have, and we think that you can be trusted to fulfill a responsibility and to serve us in in a certain way. Now, you get somebody who's got too big an ego and who who is too much of a of a trailblazer. That isn't necessarily somebody you want to carry your voice because your voice may become meaningless to that person. So we have to choose wisely the individuals that we are willing to not only follow, but the, the ones that we are willing to promote as our leaders. 
So I think this is this is important. Look, I think you can see people in a community that you think have a leadership role. Maybe maybe it's because they're teachers or or because they um, you know have a, have a certain you know skill set, whether it's a physical skill set or, or you know a, a mental capacity that that gives them you know uh, that you can see an advantage in, in in something that somebody brings to the table. I get that. Somebody's got you know if you're if you're a math whiz. I want I want the math whiz uh, that's going to help me do the calculations. I'm not going to say, yeah, I don't I, I, I like the, I like this guy. He's my buddy. If he can't do math, I don't want him. I don't want him doing my calculations for me. So so I think these are, and I know some of the stuff is obvious, but I think it's it's really important that we understand skill sets, but we also make sure that we don't prop somebody up because they happen to have a have a, a particular skill that we don't prop them up in the in the wrong areas so when i talk about voting and i'm not necessarily talking about casting a ballot but i'm, I'm saying when you devote when you devote yourself to somebody make sure that you're not going to be let down so i mean i, I look the, the world has become a little bit of a smaller place part of it is because we have the ability to communicate so easily and so quickly i mean i you think about what it would what it took to make decisions at, at, um, at a grand council, you know, hundreds of years ago when you had to send a runner out by foot to carry a wampum that, uh, you know, that he had to remember what the words were associated with those wampums as he was delivering a message. And, and I'm not saying that, that, it, that those systems didn't work, but they, they, but they were slow. We live today that you can you can essentially call or contact somebody and you can do, you know, Zoom meetings. You can do, you know, all, you, you can have all kinds of remote relationships that were not possible before. We we can buy and sell. We can do, you know, all kinds of, you know, uh, trade and commerce electronically today. I think we should make sure that we have backup systems as we're doing that stuff. But but we can do we can do a lot more today uh, at a much faster pace. So. I, I think we have to utilize the the infrastructure that's out there that allows us to do this stuff. And in, in, and because it's available, frankly, we don't have to necessarily compromise as much on what some of the other characteristics are of the people that we that we want to build a coalition with. So I can I can find somebody in California who I agree with and who I think shares my values. And even though I may not ever have to go out to California to have that, you know, to, to have a face-to-face -face meeting or, you know, or you work side by side, physically side by side, we can find ways to work together without being together. So I think this is part of, part of what I'm trying to communicate here is we should utilize the resources we have to find the like-minded people in you know, throughout the world for that matter. You know, we, from an indigenous standpoint, we also know that there, that there are indigenous people, populations all over the, all over the planet. Some that we have had very, very little uh, communication with. There's always been this dream about the eagle and the condor. And this is this, um, uh, you know, almost this, uh, um, pro it's been prophesied, so to speak. Now we can actually have, um, more open and easily, uh, more easily have dialogue with, with, with some of the indigenous peoples from, uh, from South America in ways that we never could before. But having that conversation or, or only getting together for, you know, f you know, to be on a stage at the UN isn't as important as it, as actually building something together and, and doing something. I don't mean just meeting, but I mean, whether it's, it's again, trade or commerce or cultural exchange or, 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 or among the things that we don't do enough is understanding that because we all have our own lived experiences. When we do confront a problem, finding out how somebody else might have, might have a, you know, addressed that problem. We might find that, that somebody in a very remote part of, uh, of the planet, someplace that we're not that familiar with, has come up with better solutions on how to deal with, with an oppressive government, for instance. I mean, look, the United States isn't the only government that's oppressive. It may be among the most, but, um, I, but you know, China is certainly, uh, you know, a, a big power. So how do some of the indigenous people deal with, deal with that? How do they insulate or isolate themselves from, from such an oppressive power? I think these are some of the things that we, we can now have, access to, to have some of those conversations. And 
look, the planet isn't getting any bigger. You know, we can we can argue we have limited resources, but you know, sometimes when I look at the the amount of land that is still available, and I don't mean for exploitation or for development, but but certainly that we, that we could use, and that we and I don't mean use up, but you know, even even in Seneca territory here, I I know it's limited i mean it's it's a it's a fraction a small fraction of once of what once was considered seneca land but there's still a lot of land here you know for for ag projects and for you know for you know for woodland projects there's still a lot that could be done that would be um environmentally sound and safe and you know as i see more and more people doing some things on that land whether it's you know putting in white corn or some of the the ag projects that are going on uh, i know they've got they've got a buffalo herd down um in uh in, in ohio territory so i think it's that, that stuff is is all good but I, I look at other places and look there's also lands that are available that are not necessarily native lands that that projects can be done on and you know uh, as I talk about some of this coalition, it may not just be native people that we're building these alliances with. I, I think about other people, other, other marginalized people, whether it's, you know, people of other cultures or, or other ethnicities or races or, or people that we have relationships with historically, you know, uh, again, the, the black native relationship. I think we are cautious about how we proceed with that, but some of that caution, I think may you know, maybe eliminating possibilities. And when, again, when I think about buying power and, uh, and you know, and frankly, wealth that, that exists within different, uh, you know, pockets of, uh, of, you know, uh, of peoples, there may be opportunities to, to do some things with some of these, these relationships. If we can, if we can set aside some of our own biases and not look at somebody for, um, for what history says, about us, but look at where we see where we see a future together. So I think this kind of this kind of you know um, relationship building, coalition building, is something that we've got to we we really do have to begin to explore it. And as I when I started the program, I talked about how we may find in our own communities we don't see eye to eye with some of the very people that we live with. And I'm not you know you know citing any specific example here, so I'm not condemning the people that I live around. I, you know, I, I'm Mohawk or Gonyagahog and I live in Seneca territory. So I'm not condemning anybody. But if you begin to actually do something, uh, whether it's a project, whether it's a, you know, uh, perhaps it's, it's a home project or it's a, it's a, you know, an ag project or, 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 or some sort of other business development. Maybe it's, it, it's associated more with food or, or whatever. If you build something, that others can see as an example, you may you may bring people to your way of thinking that perhaps weren't there before. So I, I think the whole idea is understanding that we're that we're not static. I mean, we we are all you know somewhat dynamic. We're all moving, uh, and you know what do they say? They say uh, you know change is inevitable, but improvement isn't. You know you can you can actually you you can change for the worse or change for the better. So, but I, I think we have to caution against sensationalism, and and I think we have to, you know, have realistic um, expectations on what we can accomplish, and and realist, realistic expectations on what we can have for each other. Look, if 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 we're trying to build a brand new skill set that doesn't exist in in any of us, we're going to stumble sometimes, and and I think it's important that we that we try to identify who are the uh, the most likely to succeed uh, in 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 fulfilling a responsibility and as we do that we'll learn we'll learn together we'll learn together on how to you know build the perfect mousetrap you know how do uh, you know how how are we going to deal with with energy and uh, um, needs in the future how are we going to deal with some of the environmental concerns look it's easy to say you're you're against a bunch of things so if you're if you're anti fossil fuels as you're driving your car every single day, are you prepared to begin the process of weaning yourself off of that? You know, and uh, and what will that entail? You know, 
are we prepared to you know to you know to ride a bike more often or 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 whatever and how do you deal with that when when the weather gets cold i mean so do we begin to have lifestyles that are a little bit more adjusted for the for the seasons that's how we used to live we just don't live that way anymore why because we can we can have an orange you know any day of the year because the grocery store has it and so we can we can go out there and do that we we don't we've learned that we can you know build a big house and we can live as, uh, as, as comfortable in the winter time and do many of the same, you know, activities in the, in the winter time as we do in the summertime, we don't adjust for the season. And frankly, that's taken a toll on everything from our diets to our health, but also to the level of consumption that we have. And, and, and by consumption, I mean, energy consumption, food consumption, uh, you know, the idea of, of, of buying need, needless things, so I think as we develop um, these, these strategies for what a future life, I mean, I get asked this question all the time. Well, what do you, what do you see, you know, what do you see the future as? You know, how do you see um, native people in 20 years, 50 years, 100 years? Well, I probably won't see anybody in 100 years, but, uh, uh, but if you were trying to advance a, a future, what would that future look like? And are you keeping in mind what what's relevant in, in your life today? I mean, are we are we taking into account climate change? Are we taking into account the the that the level of consumption that's happening on the uh, on a global scale is unsustainable? So, how do we begin to prepare? Because I I think like like I said, change is is inevitable, but preparing for it isn't. You know, we we can you know we can be just as ill prepared. Um, as, as anybody. And, you know, so, you know, I, I heard a story about, this, you know, a father who lost his, uh, lost his home with his son in it because of a mudslide in Alaska. Well, and that's a, that's a tragedy, but these things are probably not, you know, unforeseeable. I mean, you, you can, you can see that the, some of these things are, are placing our lives at risk. And you know, and I'm not condemning you know a father who's in in grief, but but if we ignore the telltale signs that that some things are are changing and 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 changing more rapidly than we anticipated, it's it's like this this global pandemic. I mean, I I, I maybe I spay, I spend too much time looking at the numbers, but I see what's what's going on, and and you know, look, there's it's. I've I've called a lot of the the increases before they happen because I've been watching the trends, and I don't. This thing's still getting worse, and if we don't begin to anticipate what we're going to change in our own behavior, not just in the short term, perhaps even in the longer term, then we become we become victims of our own lack of preparedness. So I think this is why. I, we need to make sure that we that we communicate clearly and properly with each other so we can understand who we we who we are best suited to have these you know bigger commitments with and to and I, you know look and this can be you know interpersonal relationships but it also can be again uh, how your how your families interact with each other community building nation building and again, coalition building as it as it relates from from territory to territory. Uh, you know, there there are a lot of people selling you know you know selling something, and you know some of the bills of goods that they're selling are not what they're cracked up to be. So I think we have to be careful. I think as you know as people offer something you know to to help, um, you know I think you have to understand what what they want out of the deal as well, and and make sure you're not giving something up you know, for something for nothing, so to speak. Um, I, you know, as, as I, as I've looked at the, the kinds of, um, things that we do, even, you know, even from the activist community, you, you want to make sure that, look, if you're going to, if you're going to go into a battle and I don't mean literally, uh, well, it could be literally, but if you're going to go into a battle, make sure you're not going into a situation where, where somebody's going to play, you know, leave you in, in, in harm's way while they, while they duck for cover. And so as we, we build these relationships, 
I think we need to we need to ha- spend the the important time preparing for what we are going to do. Um, not only in in an adverse situation, but even as we're, I mean, look, I'm I'm past raising children at this point. Um, although I have grandchildren that I'm that I'm watching grow, uh, but as we as we interact with children, how do we prepare our children for what what is education going to look like? You know, in not just next month, but in six months and the next few years. I think we're we're seeing a lot of change on how we evaluate. Uh, uh, there's a lot of talk about canceling student debt in the United States because there was this big push that everybody had to get a college education, and then it turns out that there are people with with PhDs who can't find work. So, are we going to reevaluate what what that kind of education means and looks like, um, especially as we pursue education? for the purpose of, you know, of a career. That's not the only reason to get educated. I mean, I think there's a lot of reasons to go, go to college and to, and to, and to travel and to, and to learn things. Uh, some of it's about, you know, uh, personal fulfillment and, and broadening your, yourself. But we also, at some point have to realize that we have to, you know, if, if we want families, we've got to feed them. We've got to house them. We've got to clothe them. So how do you do that in a, in a way that doesn't, um, you know, feed into, you know, the overconsumption model that exists, you know, throughout the globe right now? So I think these are these are some of the things that, you know, and I look, I know I'm talking about generalities, but I really came to to think before the show here how important it is that we we give a stronger look to what our relationships look like and and as we partner with people, as we, you know, again, build coalitions. Look, I, I know even in some of the, the conflicts that I've been involved with, you got to, you, you got to be wary of, of the people that you, that, that are going to have your back. You know, I always, you know, assess for one thing, I want to be the person that somebody can rely on. But I also know that in a situation, I want to know that I've got people that I can rely on. Worst case scenario. I mean, uh, and, and, and I don't strive to be in that worst case, but in that worst case scenario, it's nice to know who are the people that you can count on. Who's going to look after your family members? Who's going to, uh, to make sure that, uh, that if you become impetuous, if you get caught up in the moment, that they can pull you back, they can ground you. You know, we, we oftentimes can get really you know, caught up in the moment. And, and especially when we get into a, a physical confrontation or, 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 or something that, it, you know, evokes strong emotions. Sometimes we need, we, we need to have the people next to us who can, who can help us gain our own bearings and, and our own perspective as we in turn do, do for them. So I think this is what I'm, uh, I, I think it's really important that, that people understand yourself, what your goals are and how to align yourself with other people that you have shared goals with. I, th- I think it's, it's, it's critical. And it, it, this may not seem that important today at this moment, but as I see the future, as, as I see where I would like, where I'd like to see native people go and, and how we will live in the future. I think it's not about trying to gr- create this, this grand um, sense of unity. I think we've got to find the pockets of people that we share common thought with, p- common goals with, and try to um, develop some success within those groups, not to the exclusion of others, but perhaps with the, with the hope that as we demonstrate success, people will become like-minded like us, not necessarily trying to jam round pegs through square holes, but... Um, uh, maybe maybe we we wait till some of those people you know shave off a little bit of those corners so to speak. So anyway, that's my that's my message for today. Um, let's try to make sure that we the company we keep is um, is is sustainable, so that so that we can be sustainable. So I want to thank you for listening. Um, this is Let's Talk Native with John Kane. We'll see you next time. Yahweh and Ona. Thank <laughs> you.